It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about local send. Now, if you've ever seen people with Apple devices uh, doing AirDrop, um, you know what local send essentially is, except local send works on Apple devices, Android devices, Windows machines, Linux machines, it just doesn't matter and you don't just have to do it from a device to a computer, you can go from computer to computer, you can do all kinds of really cool stuff. And essentially, it's exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to send files from one machine to the other across your local network. Now, this is one of those things that until you need it, you may not realize how powerful and valuable it really is. Or until you've used it, you don't realize how powerful and valuable it really is. Um, my family, we, we all have our own devices and I use Linux. My wife uses Mac. My daughter has Linux. My mom has an iPad. And sometimes I just want to move a thing from one place to another to work with it, regardless of what it is. Sometimes my mom needs help with her iPad, and I want to get the file off the iPad and onto my Linux system. And instead of having to go and attach it to an email and email it to myself and all that kind of stuff, local send is a really easy way to get that done. That's the reason I wanted to talk about it. I actually started this video a long time ago, months ago, and, and then it just stopped. I just didn't want to try to... to give it to you without really having some good foundation about why it's important, but it's a really, really cool application. I think you're gonna enjoy it. I think it's gonna help you with your workflows, especially if you have to move files from device to device a lot. It can be really useful. We're getting into local send, how to use it, how to install it right after this. I just wanna say thank you so much to all my patrons over at Patreon. I truly appreciate your support every month. It means a ton to me. You're supporting me and you're supporting open source and that just means so much. And as always, you can watch this video on Patreon because I upload the video directly to Patreon and you can watch it without ads. So if the ads bother you, consider going over to Patreon and becoming a patron. You can watch the videos without ads. For everybody who sends me buy me a coffee or buy me a beer through PayPal, those one-offs, man, I just, I, I, think, I thank you so much. It really means a lot. I, I love to see those notifications come through. It just makes my day. I really, really appreciate it. To all of you who are subscribers on YouTube, thank you. It really helps the channel grow. It helps other people discover and find amazing open source software that can solve problems for them, and it helps support the open source community. So thank you so much. If you haven't already done it, Go, over, go down there and click on the like, click on that subscribe, click on the little bell so you'll get notifications about upcoming videos that I'm putting out about great open source software and stay in the know. All right, let's get into local send. So local send is exactly what it sounds like. And if we jump over to their download page, you'll see here they've got Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS. So you can actually install it on all these different types of systems. For Linux, they've got a lot of different ways to do this. You can get a tar, you can get the deb if you're on a Debian based system or Ubuntu based system. You can get an app image if you like app images, which I kind of like app images. Um, and then they've got all the releases, but over here they've also got flat pack, they've got Nix packages, they've got snaps, and they've got the AUR. So you, everybody should pretty much be covered by one of these methods of installing things if you're running Linux. If you're using Mac, they of course are on the Apple App Store. Makes it easy, keeps it really simple, but they also have binaries. If you want to grab the DMG, you can do that. You just have to know how to go into your Mac and actually allow things to be installed and run that haven't come from the App Store. Windows, they've got EXEs, they've got ZIPs, and then they've also got Winget, Chocolatey, and Scoop. So you've got multiple ways to get this application and install it. For Android, of course, they're on the Google Play Store, but they're also on F-Droid and on the Amazon Store, depending on the type of device you're putting it on and what store you have access to. If you like to sideload things, they also have an APK that you can grab. For iOS, of course, they are on the App Store. That's really the only way to get stuff on iOS unless you jailbreak your phone and there's a whole bunch of stuff around that, but you can get it from the App Store, so no need, no need to jailbreak in that case. I am, of course, on Linux. I just clicked on App Image and it downloaded the App Image earlier. I haven't run it yet, uh, but there's also Flatpak. I'm a pretty big fan of the Flatpak stuff, and Flatpak really just runs right here through Mint, so I'm on Mint 22. If you're on a system that just uses the App Store, you can just go to your App Store. Um, once it comes up, just type in what you're looking for. Sometimes it takes a second just to load up and make sure it's got the newest references and things. So like Telegram, I, I'm, I'm not on Telegram anymore. I'm just not a fan of what they've been doing and how Russia's kind of forcing them to give data and stuff like that. But it's up to you if you like Telegram, that's great, but they're showing you all this stuff up at the top there that's nice. Um, for local send, we would just type in local send. Now I've gone into Mint and I've told it, hey, I want unofficial packages or things like that too, so uh, don't, don't sweat that, but in this case, it comes up with a flat pack. I can just click and then just, it tells me it's a flat pack and I can click on install. It's gonna tell me what all it's gonna get. 
say continue, and it's all through the graphical user interface, nothing to do in the terminal if you don't want to. If you prefer to use the terminal, you can absolutely do that. But up here it tells you, and then it says, hey, I'm done, and it's ready. So I've got local send already installed here. So we'll go open it up just by searching again in our start menu. And here's the name that it gives my device by default. So if this is what it wants to call my device, that's fine. And it gives it this number, uh, pound 105, pound six, pound one. Um, we can also go over here and, and look for uh, other devices on my network. So I haven't set up my phone yet, but I'm about to. So I'm gonna record the screen here. Give me just a second. And I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna search first for local send because I think I downloaded this before. Yeah, so I just need to reinstall it. But of course it's on the app store. If you are not used to using the app store, you probably haven't been on an iOS device before, uh, but it's not hard. So it's gonna ask me for my location. I'm gonna hit allow, that's fine. And you can see that now I have my machine here that's called large orange and it's got its own set of numbers. And again, uh, different things that we have. So it's it's got this quick save, which is off. If you turn that on, I believe that it'll just save things automatically. It won't prompt you. And the same way here on the desktop screen, um, if you do favorite, and then it allows anything that's marked as a favorite to do that. But if it's not, then it'll still ask you. And then of course you can just leave it off where it asks you about all devices, I believe. So we're gonna look here and you can see I'm on the Wi-Fi, and over here I'm on my Wi-Fi network. So when I look at my phone here, you can see that I get uh, already, I've got my computer listed. So I can say, hey, yeah, you know, that's the one I wanna send something to. And then I can touch the little heart there to mark it as a favorite. It's gonna ask, is this the device name I actually wanna have? And um, I don't, now my font is really big, so it's not doing very well trying to correct it, but I can still type and that's fine. And I'm gonna call this uh, Brian Mini. PC. I'm going to hit confirm and it should change that name and it does. You can see it's now listed as Brian Mini PC Apple. I guess I didn't get rid of the Apple part, but that's okay. Um, I know what that machine is now a little bit more clearly. And it says, please ensure that the, that the desired target is also on the same Wi-Fi, which it is. Um, and then it's here, like, what do you want to send? I want to send media, text, paste, or file or folder. So I'm going to pick file. It's going to go into basically my file system here. And I've got an open VPN uh, thing here that I want to send. I'm going to hit open. And it's going to just say, hey, okay, I can add more. I can edit that one if I want to. I don't have to. Uh, and then once I'm ready, I can tap the device that I want. And you can see it says it's going to be sending from local orange or lovely orange over to Brian Mini PC Apple. If that's what I want, and it says waiting for a response. So on this side, it should be prompting me and it's telling me, hey, Lovely Orange wants to send you a file. So on the desktop, I'm just gonna go here and say, there's options for one thing, so you can look at this. It says save to a folder, it's just gonna save it to my downloads by default, but I can edit that folder location. The file itself, it's gonna tell me what is this file, and of course I can edit that, or I can say, yeah, it's fine. Um, so here it's just telling me, do you want to accept this or not? Now I could decline it and it's going to go away, but I can also accept it. It's going to bring over that file. It's going to show me the progress and it's 9.7 kilobytes. It's not a very big file, but it tells me here's the total progress and uh oh, finished with an error. What happened? Never made it. Let's just hit done. Let's try this again. Maybe something went wrong. Let's, let's try again. We're just going to tap it again. We're going to accept it over here on the desktop. And if we get the error again, we'll look at advanced and see if we see any details here. It says it got an error again, but it's not telling me what the error is, so that doesn't really help me solve the problem. Let's go open it from the, the app image that I downloaded. So we'll go to downloads. Now you can see it gave itself a different name this time. Um, so we can go into the settings and we should be able to change that name, I think. So we can change this so that we identify the machine easier. Here you can change where it's gonna save things by default. You can, you can require a pin if you want to. Again, you can enable the quick save for favorites or you can just set it to quick save for everything. It's kind of up to you if you wanna do that. Uh, let's enable quick save just to see what it does. In fact, let's do it with it off first. Um, everything else there looks okay. So it sees my phone, but I don't think it's allowed to send anything to my phone, but maybe. 
Uh, but first, let's go see if we see our device. Okay, it sees the device. Let's try the same file. We'll tap the machine we want to send it to. It's going to ask us to confirm over here on the on the computer. We're going to hit accept. This time it looks like it went. It says finished, so we should have that uh, application over here, which it says home Brian. And there it is, right there. So we just got it. Uh, so there it is. So it moved over. I think the issue with flat packs is that flat packs are containerized in a way that they don't have access to the file system that you need. It's probably a permissions thing, so you just have to go in and fix that somehow. And I'm sure in the documentation it tells you what to do. I just haven't done that. So the app image seems to be working just fine. Uh, I can hit done right here and we're done. So I was able to drop a file really fast, which again, sometimes I'm working with my mom's stuff and she has she's a writer and she needs me to do something so she's got this file and i just need to drop it over here to make it easier to work on on a bigger screen and this is a really great way to do that so i really like how simple this can be uh, as far as local send just working on your devices now again i use the app image in this case the deb probably would have worked just fine as well the flat pack probably works but you probably just need to do something in the background to make it easier to get it to, to actually function the way that it just did for this now in theory i should be able to send things to my iphone as well so I've got my iPhone over here. I'm going to go back to the Wi-Fi screen and I'm just going to go and pick a different file. I think, um, yeah, let's go to downloads and let's just pick, I don't know anything here. Uh, my resume. How about that? And we'll open it and we're going to click on the phone and the phone pops up and it says hey they're trying to send you a file do you want to accept and i'll say yes and you see it went really fast it finished very quickly so i can say done there and done here and now i've got that pdf in my file system on my phone so moving things back and forth between these machines is really fast i really like that and i, I think it's a really cool application that makes things very simple uh, I don't have any Windows machines or anything to test with, but it, it does work between all the different things. Um, I've seen it do that before, and uh, I'll leave some links to some other videos as well down in the description so you guys can go check them out. There's really not a lot to getting these things installed. Go to your app store, get it installed. In this case, I'm using the app image for Linux, but again, Deb would probably work. The AUR has it. A lot of different places that you can get it for your different various uh, systems, so definitely get out there and give it a shot. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come on the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.